How you doing, Kelowna? Uh, my name is Ernie Ware. I came from Kamloops. Uh, I've been doing comedy for nine years, and that doesn't mean I'm fucking funny. So you're in for a treat. Uh, I want to give a big uh, thank you to all the comedians that uh, have helped us build a scene in, in Kamloops. Uh, people that have come to our open mic, people that have uh, been to our festival, and a huge round of applause for Dave Cobb and everything he does for this town. You guys don't know how good this fucking scene is, guys. If we can build Calums to 25% of what you guys are doing, I'm going to be a really happy man. So I'm uh, really happy to be here. Um, I, I wanted to tell, uh, tell a joke about blowjobs, but I don't get them. Um, I, I quit drinking about a month and a half ago. It's been going pretty good. Thank you. Uh, I feel a lot better, like, my, like I, I, I got some clarity, right? I'm better at my job, I'm a better dad, I'm a better husband. Uh, but it's kind of fucking up my reputation, because I'm not an asshole anymore, right? <laughs> but luckily, my mother-in-law moved back to town, guys. I see her four days a fucking week. I am glad to say I'm still a fucking asshole. <laughs> In the adult film industry, they got the term MILF. It means mom, I, mother I'd like to fornicate with. Uh, I have a different acronym. Mine's mother-in-law. Fuck! <laughs> We've got MILF me, mother-in-law, fuck you. MILF all, mother-in-law, fuck off. And my personal favorite, MIL SWIRMFLA, which means mother-in-law, stop ruining my fucking life. <laughs> Uh, quitting drinking, uh, I, I'm, I'm a little worried about it too, guys, because quitting drinking, I'm not sure if I'm funny anymore, uh, because most of my humor is self-deprecation, and like, it comes from the darkness, man, it comes from the dark places. And I stopped drinking, I started loving myself. Like, more than the three to five minutes a night that I used to love myself for. Like, I actually gave a shit about me as a human, I accepted myself as fucked up. The worst thing is, guys, I love my wife now. That's 80% of my routine. You see me in cabinets, I shit on that woman a lot. Like, not, not literally, that's... But, like, I fuck that bitch. It's basically the, like my comedy album was fuck that bitch, right? And, and now I love her. And I can't tell her that I love her, right? I can't tell her that she was right. And now that I've quit drinking, like I'm a better human because that's way too much power to give your spouse that you've been with for 15 years. She's gonna hold that shit over me forever. So I started drinking again, guys, because fuck that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are a great crowd, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I wanted to tell a joke about blowjobs, but you guys probably don't get them either. <laughs> I got some really bad news yesterday, guys. I had a doctor's appointment, and uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to, to make it tonight because it, it was shitty, man. It sucked. And I'm just going to get it off my chest, okay? I was diagnosed with obesity, guys. I know it snuck up on me, too. I haven't had a mirror in my house in 25 years. There were signs. There were signs. Like when I walked up the stairs at Dakota's, it took me about 45 because I needed a couple breaks. Uh, when me and my wife went out for on dates, uh, people were like, hey, it's number 10 or 01, depending on what side she was on. <laughs> and I did uh, give uh, a pair of pants to Goodwill, and it now houses a family of 12. So <laughs> there were signs, right? There were signs. But I'm okay with it. Like, Chris, fuck off. You're not that fuck off. <laughs> Ooh, 220. So was I when I was a fucking fetus. <laughs> fat for a long time, guys. I've been fat for a long time. I accepted it. I embraced it because it's what you do, right? You, uh, and, and, and I'm good, right? Because it's hard to do comedy, so I make fun of myself because you can't make fun of other people anymore. You shouldn't marginalize people, right? We can't be racist anymore. We shouldn't. You can't make fun of women unless you are a woman or identify as one, and then you can compete against them and take all the fucking trophies, right? <laughs> True fact. <laughs> Uh, you shouldn't make fun of the LGBT community unless you identify, uh, especially if you're cis and white, just shut the fuck up, don't do it. And it's gotten so like hard to do comedy, like I couldn't even bring a ginger up here and boot him off the fucking stage. <laughs> like that's fucked up, we gotta share the world with these soulless daywalkers, guys! <laughs> fuck, but there's always one group of people that you'll always be able to make fun of and that's us fat fuckers, right? 
<laughs> but don't make fun of fat women because those aren't fucking stretch marks. Those are tiger stripes, and you earn that, girlfriend. <laughs> but I have no excuse. I am a fat, lazy piece of shit. I hate running. I love food. Here I am. Hallelujah. <laughs> <sighs> And what are we gonna do? Like, are we gonna are we gonna march? <laughs> fat guys ain't march. It's so fucking ironic, right? Because if fat people would just mobilize together and march, we wouldn't be fat anymore. <laughs> but it's not gonna fucking happen, guys. We we get them all together. We get them all together and be like, yeah, we're gonna march. We're like, how far? <laughs> We'd be losing soldiers every fucking couple blocks and be like, <laughs> heart attacks, fucking. Uh, it'd be bad. It'd be bad. Uh, so yeah, you can always make fun of some fat fuckers, but uh, I do get offended, right, when uh, people like Chris appropriate my fatness, right? <laughs> it's garbage, guys. Fucking people like during COVID, people will, like gain weight, like they gain like, oh my god, I gain like ten pounds. Or, oh my god, I gain like twenty pounds. I shit that twice a day. <laughs> So I've come up with four rules that you have to follow before you can call yourself fat. Rule number one, if you've ever lost 50 pounds and still been fat, you can call yourself fat. I've done it, don't clap, it wasn't this year. I'm on the up, I'm a fucking roller coaster ride of cellulite and broken dreams, it's pretty good. It's pretty funny though when you do tell your friends, when you are a fat fuck and you tell your friends, yeah, I've lost like 20 pounds and they look at you and they're like, I don't see it bro. I don't see it. Painful, right? And rule number two, if you ever question whether or not you look good in a moo, moo you can call yourself fat. Uh, rule number three, if the last time you saw your genitalia was when you did a handstand in front of a mirror. <laughs> Sorry, headstand, fat guys can't do handstands. And finally, if you've ever considered tucking your stomach into your pants, <laughs> you can call yourself fat. That means I have to buy new pants. That's really the whole fucking point. Like I've got, like I've got to this, this beautiful fucking state where I've got about 50 pound swing where I don't have to buy smaller pants or bigger pants. It's pretty fucking great. So it's where I, it's where I live now. It's where I live. <laughs> have you ever broken a chair? Any, anybody ever broke a chair? Like I've broken more chairs than they're, not that they're in this room, but this one, like this was a trap. <laughs> I've broken chairs, guys. Like, like, fuck off. <laughs> I know I'm from Camelot, but I didn't come here to break your shit, right? <laughs> Fucking, uh, I, me and my, me and my wife, we went to, to, to my hometown to meet my parents. Uh, not meet, meet them, but I was bringing her there to meet some of the family. And we didn't have chairs, so we picked up a lawn chair, right? And. Uh, I broke it within like an hour, right? We broke this fucking fold-out chair. And so she's like, well, we're gonna have to take that back. And I'm like, no, you're gonna have to take that back. So I'm not fucking taking it back, look at me. <laughs> no, sir, no refunds. <laughs> I was gonna tell another joke about blowjobs, but it's kind of hard to swallow. <laughs> You guys ever been, you guys get bullied? I got bullied. Anybody get bullied? A couple people? Yeah. It's fun, right? Good times. Uh, I grew up in the big city of Merritt. That's not why I got bullied, because everybody lived there. Right? They're all from there, so that didn't make any sense. To bully them. But I've been fat for, they called me fat when I was in grade four, right? I look at the pictures, I wasn't, that was, they're just me, right? But I embraced that shit, right? Uh, but I was also in band, and I was also a giant pussy. So it kind of makes sense, right? And uh, <laughs> it's all good. It's where I'm going, right? Uh, but uh, I've been bullied. I have bullied. As you get bigger, you know, you realize you can throw small small people around too. Uh, but it never prepared me for my bully now, and that's my fucking four year old daughter, right? Like she is ruthless, guys. Like I started shaving my head recently and like, cause I wanted to pay homage to my German ancestry. And uh, <laughs> it's a bad joke, I know. But uh, I'm not German, I'm fucking not. My, I, I come from a long uh, line of whores, right? Uh, I'm basically every, every country in Europe, there's some, something, there's okay, yeah, sure, let's go. Um, <laughs> 
But yeah, my, my daughter, she's ruthless. Like she was like, oh, like when I shaved my head, she, what this one wasn't bad. She's just like, Dad, you got no hair. And then she's laughing at me all the time because I have no hair, right? And that's not bad. But it was when she knew I was heavy and she starts being subtle about it. She's like, Daddy, come skateboarding with me. And I'm like, no, I can't. I can't. I try, I'm trying. I've never skateboarded in my life, and I'm trying at 45 years old, guys. It's fucking terrifying, right? And like when we, she goes and jumps on the neighbor's trampoline, and she's like, Dad, come jump on the trampoline right now. And I'm like, dude, again, fuck you, you little bitch. I checked. I checked the, uh, the weight limit. It was 250 pounds. I mean, I'm not wrecking the neighbor's trampoline, right? That's, that's a, pit, a bill that I don't need to have to fucking pay, right? Um, fuck. Me. Uh, uh, I was going to tell another joke about blowjobs, but it kind of blew up in my face. Um, I, I got to know, speaking of blowjobs, if you could, would you? Like, if you could, would you? If you could, if you could suck your own dick, would you do it? For the guys, come on. Yeah? You'd do it if you had a dick? It's amazing. Don't you think, though, don't you think it's more giving a blowjob than getting a blowjob? Right? Like, sure, you're going to derive some pleasure out of it, but you've got to work really hard to get you to that point where you're going to get that pleasure, right? You're sucking that dick for the 70, 95% of it, and then you're getting a blowjob for the last 5%, right? And what would you do? Would you be nice to yourself, right? Would you be nice to yourself? Would you, would you let yourself, would you give yourself a tap? Right? Tap yourself on the head before you were out to go? Or would you like, would you spit or would you swallow? Right? These are things that you have to consider whether before you uh, suck your own dick. Or would you just come all over yourself and, and would you be rough? Like would you grab yourself by the head and be like, suck that dick, bitch! Or would but the dick but the dick's in your mouth so it's like bum, bum, bum. These are the questions that you need to ask before you start sucking your own dick. I don't have a bro. You're good. You think about it. For me, I like. I, we've already established this here, right? We've already said this is a barrel. I'd have to have like a 32-inch hog. And then start, <laughs> not fucking getting in there, guys. And it seems like doing too much fucking crunchies to me, right? You're thrusting from the bottom, you're pulling down from this way. I don't do exercises! So I'm out! I'm sucking my own dick. Fuck. I did go to the doctor, guys. I did, I did actually go to the doctor for a physical, and uh, I got all prepped, right? I was, I was ready. I'm 45 years old, so I was ready. I was getting, gonna get that fucking digit test, right? Wasn't excited about it, but I was ready. And I was like... It made me start, he never fucking touched me, guys. It's fucked up. He didn't put his fingers in my ass. He didn't even cut my balls to make me cough. I was like, fuck, I'm ugly. All right, cool. <laughs> but it made me, made me think about it, guys. It made me think about how do you do an anal date, right? Like, how do you get prepped for that shit? Because I was like, I was scared because I had to go to the bathroom like five minutes before I had to go for this potential digit test. I was worried, right? I was fucking worried. But how do you prep for that? Like I, a bath, I assume a bath is, is the starting point. And then maybe maybe X-lax, like a laxative. But when's the right time to do the laxative, guys? When's the right time to do the laxative? It's not like, it's like not four hours before, that's dangerous. Is it 12 hours before? Is that enough fucking time? And what do you do when you go on an anal date? You don't go out for dinner, right? You're not gonna go have a fucking steak. So you just invite them in, like we're gonna do some anal, so you're just like knock knock, let's go, fucking anal time, and then you go out for dinner to wash that taste out of your mouth? <laughs> this is what happens when you're fucking me. So it's all, your, it's all in your head. My wife made it really easy for me. She uh she had her asshole so shut. Um, true story, it's not a it is what it is, but I bet her she had uh she had a, she's yeah, she doesn't have a butthole, so I've got Two choices, right? Really <laughs> and uh, realistically, I have just one choice because I'm married for 15 years. So. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you've been a hell of a lot of fun. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Eddie So much for supporting my comedy and gambling. Let's